I've clicked onto the logo of Tropical Overview for March the 30th, 2023. As is always the case in these videos, the thoughts expressed here are mine alone, and if you're here looking for local information to you, I had about Tropical Cyclone in the wrong place, so I was going to make a picture of things, and I cannot get down to a local level that your local weather office or local emergency management can. Well, it's been a bit of a surprise today in the Australian region with uh, Cyclone Herman here in the Western Australian region has uh, substantially intensified over the past several hours. You might be able to see actually if I refresh this, um, might be able to see potentially more of the eye because as time goes on, this eye continues to clear out. We'll look at a closer infrared lo loop so you'll be able to see that uh, eye clearing better but this system has been really a surprise models were really not expecting this system to form really at all uh not even get this strong uh, or well anywhere near the strength that it is now which is uh, likely a category four on the au scale and the saffir simpson hurricane wind scale and uh before we dive into the specifics of what's going on with this system just want to point out that those in western australia worried about this coming your way good news is it's not going to come your way. This is going to likely weaken during the day tomorrow and then get carried out to sea by uh, a large subtropical ridge that uh, will be extending from Madagascar to Australia. And we'll look at that in the modeling in just a moment. But uh, we are going to look now at the latest microwave pass that we have. We had uh, an AMSR pass come in uh, a little like like a few minutes ago from when I'm recording this, but unfortunately it missed. Uh, we got pretty lucky getting like, I think three or four of these in the, uh, you know, the matter of 12 to 18 hours. It's pretty lucky to get direct hits on storms like this, but unfortunately our luck ran out. We had a miss of a microwave pass, but this one being old still tells quite the story of her man. You can see a pretty well-built inner core structure especially on the northern side and this has been seen since yesterday evening i'm talking utc time of course uh but yesterday evening uh, we got a microwave pass that had confirmed that this system had de developed an inner core which was a complete uh difference from say earlier in the afternoon yesterday where it had no inner core and now it seems that this system has managed to maintain this inner core structure and has managed to intensify quite a bit and really this is one of the reasons why the system has managed to intensify so much but another reason i think this, is, this system has really intensified so much is because if you look at this water vapor loop we've got a low here low here large ridge here and in between these two uh, we have increased uh, or accelerating upper level anticyclonic outflow on the south side of her man this is primarily being driven by a jet streak that is being enhanced by both of these systems. Primarily this low and this ridge, but the system over here, way southwest, does have an impact in it. And with this upper level cirrus uh, being in place, uh, quickly getting away from the system, we've talked about this several times, that can lead to pretty significant intensification of a tropical cyclone. We've seen it several times this season, and Herman is just another example of that. Alongside that, sea surface temperatures have been pretty warm. If I pull up the sea surface temperature overlay, you can see it's coming out of 29 to 28 degrees Celsius waters, and really it's just trailing along the 28 degrees Celsius isotherm there. Uh, so sea surface temperatures have really not been a problem. The environment overall has not been a problem, though there are are imperfections in the atmosphere that will likely cause the system's demise in say the next day or two and we'll look at the specifics of that in a bit just uh reiterating for western australia uh as i can show the forecast from the jtwc on this we're not expecting this to come your way we are expecting this to recurve uh, uh with that large subtropical ridge that we're going to look at in just a second and that that subtropical ridge uh, is pretty large uh, reminds me of the one that, that was around when freddy was around though don't worry we're not going to have a freddy mark ii take place uh this system will likely uh, weaken and it may potentially dissipate uh before it gets another chance to redevelop but here's that close-up ir view and uh i've had several takes of this recording and every time I take a new recording, I've seen more and more signs of that eye trying to get more and more clear. We're starting to see some of those blues in there. 
uh, you can see at the end of that loop. And uh, that is really indicative of this eye trying to warm. And if it really gets that eye clear, we could see perhaps even more significant identification. It's already done that, but we could still see further identification. It's got a few more hours before uh, really wind shear becomes a really massive issue for the storm. And again, we'll look at that in the modeling. Here's the current Bureau of Meteorology forecast. You can see category four here on the AU scale, uh, but pretty short order. We're expecting this in the next 12 to 24 hours to pretty rapidly weaken and it may be a tropical low uh, at that point in um, say a couple of days. So this system is not expected to really be strong for too long, but nonetheless, the system has been very impressive, especially uh, going off what the models were saying not too long ago. So this points out that potentially sometimes models can underdo some storms and as well as they can overdo some storms. If we look at the GFS analysis of this system, uh, or really the environment, you can see uh, a pretty similar site to what I depicted in the uh, satellite imagery. You can see that ridge off towards the east with this jet streak being enhanced by this low and this low way southwest of the storm. And this is likely one of the several reasons why the system has managed to intensify. Now, we talked about in this forecast that it's not expected to stay strong for too long. If we look at the GFS, uh, that, there's the right uh, tab that I wanted to look at. This is a sounding at about 12 hours out, and there are a few things that I want you all to know. Uh, if you don't know how to read these, I'll explain them as I go. Uh, this in the center is called a skew T plot. Uh, if you look at this and you see these green lines, the green line being the dew point, the red line being temperature, the further they are away from each other means the more drier the environment is at that particular level, level of the troposphere. Uh, really all the skew plot shows is the dew point and temperature with height in the troposphere. And this also shows us how where, where there may be some dry air. So you can see in a, in a case like this, we have a dry pocket from about the 800 millibar level all the way up to about 250 millibars. And that's a pretty substantial uh, level or layer, I should say, of dry air. And this really has not been an issue so far. We have this right now uh, over the system. I can go back to the GFS analysis and you can see the same exact type of thing. But notice as well, at this beginning, and we're going to primarily look at this from here on out. Notice how pretty much throughout most of the column of the troposphere, which this plot shows the steering level with height, you've got generally from say 800, 800 millibars, 800, 850 millibars, um, all the way up to um, near the stratosphere, you've got generally northeasterly flow. But notice as we go out towards 12 hours, the flow shifts quite a bit uh, in, in relative terms. You can see in the low levels, we have southerly flow. In the mid levels, we have northerly flow. So this has changed from northeasterly to more northerly. And we have more northeasterly flow in the upper levels, even more so than it was at the analysis. There's a significant shear with height, and uh, this coupled with this dry layer in the troposphere will likely mean that the system will struggle much more than it has right now. And you can also see this depicted on the European. Here's the um, dry pocket in the troposphere. Now, it, it has missing spots on this uh, steering flow plot, but it has the general same idea. Southerly flow at the surface, northerly flow in the steering level, and you can see uh, that north northeasterly flow in the upper levels. So that makes for a pretty disorganized or worse environment. I don't know. This, I, I, I'm trying to find the word here to describe it fully. Uh, I'm kind of mixing up my words. But as this happens, the models are, and I can go to the um, uh, mid-level relative humidity plot here on the GFS. Here's by hour 12. Notice how and th this flow is the... Uh, mid-level flow. You can see the low-level center is depicted right about here, but if you look at the wind barbs, the mid-level center is now being depicted south of it, so we're getting this tilting action taking place in uh, the troposphere. So the column is no longer uh, fully stacked like it is right now. It's 
more tilted. And as that happens, you can see a majority of the moisture also starts to go south and the dry air in the mid-level starts to encroach on the low-level circulation. The dry air coupled with the tilting of the uh, column will likely mean that this system will weaken quite substantially. And uh, if we go ahead in time on the GFS, uh, you can see that dry air really get in there as really the tilt uh, uh, sustains there. You can see the low level and mid level flow there. So pretty dry layer getting into a low level circulation. And uh, as I said, that will likely mean that the system will weaken. Now, as it weakens, it will stop following the upper level flow towards uh, the southeast. It will more follow the mid level flow and lower level flow. And uh, if we look in advance, you can see this system really gets weak on the GFS in that thumbnail there. And you can also see in generally up to, say, 700 millibars, we get a more easterly flow from that subtropical ridge. And I can show you that subtropical ridge here on the five, or sorry, this is the 850 millibar flow map in the GFS. You've got this large subtropical ridge extending from uh, about Madagascar to almost Western Australia. And as this system comes and weakens, it will start feeling this flow more and follow this. Now, there is a potential that the system could redevelop in the Indian Ocean uh, as it comes further north, as it gets into more warm sea surface temperatures. You can see that taking place. If I overlay the forecast and the sea surface temperature plot, you can see it comes back closer to the 28 degree isotherm up here, though I don't know if environmental conditions will be too favorable. By this point in the GFS, this is a completely separate system. Uh, the system, or her man right now, would be depicted, say, right about there. And in the 200 millibar flow, this is a pretty substantial trough, which would likely be shearing the system uh, quite substantially. And it's even to the point where the GFS ensembles don't really show anything really there at all. It doesn't show a low pressure center. So while it is possible that we could see some redevelopment, environmental conditions will not be favoring it too much. And even if it was going to reform, we're not expecting this to be a big long track system like Freddy was. It would likely remain out to sea and not do much to any land areas. Uh, so that's really the forecast in the future of Herman. A pretty nice system to look at. I'll, I'll look at that infrared again to see if a new frame has come in. I, I'm truly interested to see how close that eye is to clearing. It's certainly trying to clear out that eye. Uh, who knows? By the time this video comes out, it may be fully cleared out. Uh, but that is really all that I have to talk about. There is the potential, I should mention briefly here, that another system forms in the next five days off the western coast of Australia, though guidance here is a bit uncertain and we are really not fully certain on development taking place here. So I'll have future updates as needed on this system uh, in the next several days. But other than that and her man, we uh, I've, I've pretty much gone over all that I wanted to talk about today. Pretty impressive system again. Uh, and thankfully, it's not going to impact any land areas uh, really too significantly. We could still see some maybe shower activity uh, in Western Australia with that uh, upper level cirrus coming over land. But thank you all for watching this video uh, and uh, I hope you all are doing well.